I dislike doing unnecessary work, but I have the mahogany dagger board here, and although it looks to be in pretty decent shape, it has definitely been varnished. You can see varnish on top of the spring clip here. Um, and it's probably time to varnish it again. And since I have my total boat varnish and stuff here, um, last time I used this on the rudder, I wasn't fully happy with my results. But I think that was mostly my own inexperience with varnish. So I'm going to try giving it another shot. Since I have some in the can, I might as well use up because it doesn't keep forever. Um, and we're going to try varnishing the dagger board and see how that goes for me. The dagger board has four major pieces. Um, two of these handle pieces of wood, the main piece of wood, and this spring clip here. There are Phillips screws, and I found a 3 8 works well on these nuts on the other end. There was varnish inside of the screws there, and a little bit on top of these flat washers, so it looks like this thing, and obviously the spring is covered by it, so it looks like somebody varnished the whole thing without taking the hardware off last time. And that piece of wood there actually had a little crack. The whole thing cracked off when I pulled on it. It wasn't glued, it just popped off, but it looks like that little bit of wood was maybe stuck with the varnish into there. Unfortunately, I've decided that getting these washers out of these holes is going to be too difficult to attempt, so they're just going to stay in there a little dirty. The spring clip is held on by a number three flat head. I'm going to test sand the inside of this spring clip and see how it goes. And if I like how it works getting that varnish off, I'll do the outside as well. This spring is brass, and uh, it's clean up pretty nicely. This is a good use of a foam block. So that's brass spring clip uh, sanded up pretty nicely. I didn't put quite as much effort into the underside, which will be hidden, as it's on the front. I'm going to try hitting with a little polishing compound. And the best way to do this is just kind of hit both sides at once. You can see we're getting a lot off of tarnish off of there. Okay, I think that's good enough. And yes, I polished the head of the screw. And of course then you realize, hey, you didn't do a good enough job on around that hole. Alright, that's better. These mating surfaces of wood looks like some wood pulled off of this part onto that part, probably because the varnish was stuck together and it stuck to itself. I think I'm just going to sand them flat. Um, we're going to lose a little bit of wood that way, but after, since they're both flat surfaces, I can sand them flat and then just stick them back in place after I varnish them and let them dry thoroughly before sticking them together. Now some of these flats, like here and there, I can get with the mechanical sander. It's really these compound curves on the inside that I'm going to have to sand by hand. And this stuff looks like it's coming off pretty nicely, getting down to a nice smooth surface. There might still be a little varnish in there stuck to the wood, but it's going pretty fast, so that doesn't look too hard. I'm going to start sanding at 120 grit, and after I've loaded up the sandpaper on this big guy, I might hit these a little bit with the hand sander, although I've already sanded them with a sanding block in all the curved areas.
I've gone through three sheets of 120 grit sandpaper. You can see I'm down to the wood in some spots. There's still some coating. I'm not sure if this was varnish or urethane or what they had on it before. Uh, but you can see, like, here's a low spot because there's wood all around it, but that coating is there. I'm not looking to knock this down very far, but I do need to get that down a little bit more. All right, I broke down and went to 50 grit and then 60 grit and then back to 120 grit and got pretty much all the previous coatings off of that. I collected a little bit of mahogany sawdust. I'm going to mix that with some wood glue and stick it in this gash here and bring that level. My sawdust and wood glue has dried overnight. For some reason it looks a lot darker than the wood here, but we're going to sand it down so it's nice and smooth and we can start varnishing this. Learning from past mistakes, I have twisted this wire, so hopefully this guy won't fall down. I'm going to do at least the first two layers of varnish vertically because I'm going to be thinning them down a lot to penetrate the wood and it's going to go on pretty thin um, and you know, I'm planning on getting it thin enough so there won't be any drips and I'll be able to do both sides at once. It's been about one to two weeks since I used this. It was about halfway down and there was solid chunks inside of this thing at the top with you know the air on the top. So I am mixing this thing up a lot and I'm gonna be pouring it through the provided filter screen so I don't get any solid chunks in what I'm working with. The issue is I don't really need that much right now so I'm going to have to do this every time I want to use it. See it's filtering through the screen there. I'm going to wait a little while for it to go all the way down. This is an example of why I'm filtering the uh, varnish because the varnish was in the can for a couple of weeks half full and so air was at the top and you know the top layer of that can got solidified and crunchy, and so we don't want any of that going on our current projects. You look inside the can, you can see a couple of week layer, or the, the, the layer where it was two weeks between my different varnishings. They only sent me two filters, so I filtered everything in the can into my total boat mixing bucket. And it turns out a dill dip lid works pretty well to seal the top. All right, I did 40 milliliters of varnish to 10 milliliters of the brushing thinner to get a very, very thin consistency for penetrating the wood initially. This is almost more of a stain than a varnish at this level. These guys have been drying for 50 minutes to an hour, and you know they're not tacky to the touch. I only had one run where excess varnish came out of this little thing here and ran down there. I kind of hit it with a foam brush when I caught it, and it's mostly smooth now. So we're going to do another coat with um, very thin, and um, that'll be the final kind of wood penetration layer. Then we'll go to kind of barely thinned. All right, I did two coats with a decent amount of thinner for penetrating the wood, hanging it vertically. Now I'm switching to horizontal, where I'm going to be using just a minimal amount of thinner for flow. And we're going to be doing some like serious actual varnishing now.
Okay, this is going to be my second coat. At this point, I have four coats on this side. On this side, I have the two coats of kind of solvented down, penetrating. Um, and on this side over here, I have the two coats of the penetrating plus two coats that had just minimal solvent for flow. And I did a pretty good job not spilling around the outside, but I have a little bit of um, run around on the side there. And up here, we had some drip through this hole and come drip down the edge here. So I'm definitely going to have to sand these high points down before I do this side. And I think what I'll probably do is sand this entire surface and the other entire surface with 320 grit to smooth the whole thing down, flip it over, do two, maybe three coats on this side, and then flip it back and I might have to sand the edges if, if lacquer or if um, varnish comes around the edges um, and do at least one more coat on this side here and then I think I'll be done. So I sanded this back side to get the little drips down, and that did really well. When I looked at the front side, I decided I was happy enough with it as it was, just to keep it like it is. So I'm going to do two or three coats on this back side, try not to drip too much around, flip it over, and maybe I'll be able to just sand the edges of the front and do one more coat on the front and um, be done. I've also been coating these guys when I coat that guy. They've been doing pretty well. I've been hanging them vertically. I got some drips right here. I'm going to have to sand those down. Um, and a little bit of build up here that's a little rough. But um, they've been doing pretty well. They're small enough I can just do the whole thing really quickly. Uh, I'm going to be sanding these down by hand just lightly to get rid of some of these drips. I'll probably do one, maybe two more coats total on them. And they're pretty much good to go. I'm trying to do a good job of keeping this varnish from going around the bottom so it doesn't drip on the other side and make me have to sand the other side some more. Because it does flow a little bit. I find if you go around and wipe the bottom side it works pretty well. It's been about two hours since my last coat. This thing is dried to the touch and we're going to do another coat. Okay, it's been two hours since my last horizontal coat on this side, so we're going to do a third coat on this side, and then we're going to call this side done.
Okay, I went back and watched all my previous videos to remember what the heck I had done so far. I put this thing up vertically and I did two coats on both sides that were thinned with the solvent to penetrate the wood. So that's kind of, say, one coat worth there. Um, then I did two coats of minimally thinned varnish on this side. And then I sanded the overlap around here and I did three coats minimally solvented on this side. So this side's had three solid coats plus the penetrating underneath. This side's only had two. So I'm going to sand this guy down, trying not to go around the edges to only have to varnish this one side here. Um, I'm going to sand it down. It's a little bit wavy and bumpy up there some places. So I'm going to sand this down and then try to do one more coat on this side and call it done. So obviously storing it in this with a lid on top is not as good as the bucket or the metal tin, which I got it off of. You can see here it's got an entire film over the top. The plus side, the film comes off pretty easily. And this is the last day I will be using because this is the last of it that I'm going to be using. Not including rubber gloves, this is all my trash left over from uh, all the coats I did on the dagger board. I have just a little bit of that Total Boat Lust varnish left over, so I'm going to solvent it down a bit, dilute it to make it into a wood penetrating thickness, and uh, coat my saw horses here. Why not? So I was wildly optimistic that I'd get both sawhorses coated there. I had about four ounces of the varnish. I put maybe an ounce of um, solvent in, and it gets real thin, that, you know, one to four kind of ratio. They're talking about 50% dilution for, wood, for um, penetrating, and man, I can't imagine. That would just be like water, or thinner maybe. But, um, well, we'll see what one coat of that does. It's Okay, everything's finished. Um, except for reassembly, but because I don't want these two handles sticking to the top of the uh, dagger board like they did from the person who did this before me, I'm going to let them sit for probably five or six days before I reassemble it and hope that the uh, varnish will have dried enough that I can take them apart again later without ripping wood off next time I have to do this. So with respect to the marine um, high gloss varnish from Total Boat, the Lust, um, I'm not going to buy this product again. You definitely need the special brushing thinner, so don't be afraid to use thinner on the product to make it flow a little better. And I was able to do two or three coats before I felt the need to sand, but I really wasn't able to do like a full project without sanding. Um, so it's maybe a little better than spar varnish. I think I would probably try to go for a urethane next time I do a project like this. It just, I've used it before and it seems a lot easier. Um, maybe the gloss isn't quite as good, but I think it's close enough. So for me, I don't think the uh, premium price is worth it for this product. It's been seven days, so this is about as dry as it's going to get, and I'm going to reassemble the handles onto the blade of the dagger board. I also got some uh, 
spring cord that I'm going to be tying through here so that I can attach this to the deck of my sailboat and uh, it'll both keep this thing from falling out hopefully and um, allow me to keep it in an upright position. The spring cord will kind of pull it against the mast and keep it from falling back down if I'm sailing downwind. The dagger board looks better than it did when I started. It wasn't in too bad of shape. I think my biggest visual gain here is going to be polishing that brass. So if you have a dagger board that's in good shape, you might consider just unscrewing this, pulling this guy out, polishing it up, and putting it back for your maximum visual gain in about 20 minutes. So I have enough varnish inside the holes here that you have to screw these screws through it. I'm going to uh, pre-screw them through Try to knock it down a little bit. But it is essentially making this thing into kind of a nut, almost. Um, so I'll have to be careful of that when I go through to make sure they're clamped together nicely before I go through all of these things. See that screw's a little bit bent. All right, I got those things just barely poking through. Hopefully, just enough to index into the uh, bottom handle here. using just a dab of thread locker. And finger tight is plenty good here, or I should say wrist tight is plenty good. We're really just holding those handles on. The rudder, which has a six ounce fiberglass cloth over it, looks a little bit darker than the dagger board, which is just the varnish. You could tie your dagger board to your hole with a bowline, but I really like these trigger spring eye clips. Um, I have this elastic line sized to the length to go around my mast and then back to the eye strap on the hole and enough elastic so it'll hold the dagger board in a halfway up position if I want to do that. And when I'm storing it, I just clip it there. 